אם אתה לא צריך. Let's start, guys. Okay, we're starting. Uh, I did find, I don't know why I didn't find it the other day, which was really strange, but I did find, this really was the presentation. It was just here. I think this one is opening, which one I open with. Uh, let me open, recent one I did. Come on. Anyone sees the PD? Okay, we can see your screen. I have it, I have it. I remember I did it. I found it the other day. And I think it is accounting. Yeah, here we go. So I hear. And here we go. This is it. Okay. So we did a lot of those stuff, by the way, in the previous sessions. Okay. Uh, we've gone through a lot of those stuff. I'm not going to go over in the recording, but please go over those videos. They are so useful. We're going to do the business intelligence probably in another week or two. I will start doing it with Daniel to actually implement it. So those tables, we're going to go over them and do them and fill them up. We'll write the code to fill them up, okay? Today, we're gonna to talk about XBRL, a very important topic, very, very important topic. I would just would like to mention that people don't see the link between XBRL and multidimensional cube, okay? But there is a big, uh, can you see me guys? Everybody is cool? Yes, doctor. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't show my screen. That's why you don't see the screen probably. Okay, now you do probably, yeah? Okay, so let me, what is one, this one. Okay, you see my screen now? Hello? Yes, doctor, we see your screen. Okay, wonderful. So we talked about all those stuff. We'll do the business intelligence for accounting, me and Daniel. And everyone is more than welcome to join. We and Brenda, I really do want because that has to do with accounting. We take the data you guys collecting and we put it inside those four tables, and that will be the basis for reporting in accounting. Okay, but there's a very big topic called XBRL. We are using it. We are using it in the. We are using it here. Basically, we're putting data, we're using here XBRL, okay? The SEC is using XBRL to put the data. We're pulling the data from the XBRL and we're doing it in a smart way. So what we want to do today is really going over and understand how the XBRL is structured. And first of all, why do we need XBRL? It's because every company traded in the US has to report the financial statement in XBRL. You can't just send your, you know, you can't just send your stuff to the SEC. It doesn't work that way. You have to, you have to fill up, a, you have to fill it up or write it in XBRL, okay? So that's why we need to start it. But before you start XBRL, you need to know something before that, which is the, uh, let me see why it doesn't like me. Can you hear me, guys? No, why it doesn't. Yes, doctor. I don't know why it doesn't like me for some reason. Yeah, there's two of them here. Ah, okay. Let me go here. Okay. Uh, that's why maybe. Okay. So before we can start with XBRL, there is things that we need the background a little bit. We'll talk a lot about a lot of stuff and all of them are so important to know. 
Then you must be expert, and I want to have a team that really understand those one eventually, God willing, okay? Stage number one is before you can go into XBRL, you have to know what XML is. So we will start with XML and then we study why XML because XML, XBRL has to fulfill the requirement of, of XML. So we need to know what XML is before we can start talking about XBRL. Why do we want to talk about XBRL? It's because it's required. You cannot have a company traded in the stock exchange in the US unless you report all your financial statement to the SEC, it's Security and Exchange Commissioner. Okay, every company in the US, they traded in the stock exchange. Traded means you can buy and sell your stock in there unless you fulfill the requirement of XBRL, meaning sending your financial statements in this format. You can not just send PDF or Excel with your data. You cannot. You have to fulfill it with XBRL. And since XBRL, it is itself an XML, we have to understand what XML is. As we do that, we'll talk about a lot of other things. So the first thing is XML. Then we'll talk about XML schema. XML schema, really, in one word, it is telling you how is the XML was structured. So a computer can understand the structure. Not a human being. Human being can look at it, can kind of understand it, but the schema is a way you can tell the computer, this is the structure of the XML. Go and read it that way, okay? Used to be something called DTD. Eh, nobody really is using it, it's almost anyone anymore, okay? I'm gonna jump from here a second. I'll get back to those ones, okay? I'll get back to those ones. All those three, they're so important. Dom, we already know. You know, HTML is the document model. You know, we use in JavaScript. Uh, for example, document that get element by ID, Daniel and his team always putting data that way. That's that model. And if you follow the HTML and you follow the rule of XML, it becomes to be what known as XHTML because it's HTML that also fulfill the rules of XML. HTML doesn't have to, okay? But it's a good idea to do it that way, okay? So I jump. Ajax, we already know. By the way, Ajax is really derived, okay, from XML. The X in the end is XML, okay? So it's asynchronic JavaScript, okay? It's asynchronic, meaning you can, behind the scene, you can send a message to the server and still work on the screen and you can send an XML. That's originally, when we use Ajax, we're really using something that 2000 and I think 2003, I remember when it's opened up, in fact, even before 2000, I started using it 2001, it was about 2000 when it came out. It's beautiful things that we're using it in Academy City. So this one, you know, this one, it's a comment. I haven't talked about those three. They are extremely important, okay? Uh, there is a language called XSLT, and I'm going to talk about it more in depth in a minute, okay? It's a mechanism in which you can take XML and convert it to something else. So I'm not going to dive into it now. I will dive into it in a minute. First, I will explain what XML. XPath, it kind of goes with XSLT because it tells you which part of the XML you want to work on. It doesn't make any sense yet because I haven't showed you what XML is, but this is goes very well with this one. This one, XQuery, that's another language that when you use XML inside the database, there's a whole language. There's no need to know it today, okay? And we'll see Django have done a lot of things that makes this one unnecessary, okay? So we'll dive into that as we go along, okay? So let's move on. And structure of the role of the XBRL and IFRS in financial reporting. First of all, as I said before, XBRL is required. So what happening? You will have a document which is XBRL and I will show you examples. The taxonomy, as I said before, like here, will have a schema. The schema, you can look at it as a taxonomy. Taxonomy is the rules 
that tells you how the XML is structured, okay? And since XBOL is XML, the testimony is really telling you how the XBOL is structured. Why do you do all of that? Because from the XML or the XBOL, I can make a lot of reports and we will get there. We're very close to that. By the way, I do it already. Okay, so the end result is to have a nice document and out of this document, I can take pieces, I can pull data, and I can make many kind of reports. Beautiful idea. The main idea of the SEC was that all the companies in the US will eventually publish their reporting in the same structure. And what will happen is if all the companies have the same tax and money, meaning structure, they're following the same rules, I can pull data from two companies exactly the same way and I can compare them. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And that's why we did all that uh, structure in Academy City to overcome the fact that companies don't really follow the rules of the XPRL as they should have. <coughs> and we will show that as we go along. Okay. So, and this is really, I just, what I was talking about, does it really work? No, it doesn't. In real life, the XBRL failed. The SEC really failed. They are not choosing. We will show examples that companies are changing takes over the years, which turns the XBRL useless in comparing financial statement one year to another. And they are failed in the sense that I cannot compare two companies, okay? Because two companies using different takes using different testimony. <coughs> so it really is a, a shame, I should say, after all that investment. And I'm gonna say it's in the recording itself. And we want people to see it. That's the way we, people will realize that we're doing the work that really useful also the SEC, okay? Now, what is XML? So let's start. Here's an example of XML. Every XML, Star with this kind of a tag, you see lower than, higher than, this is the beginning and it must end with the same tag with a slash. So this is, could be an XML because it starts with messages and end with a tag slash messages. Inside what we call children, I can have children tags. So if you see the next tag is not, Okay, so here I have a node and end up with slash node. Every tag has to end with a tag it's starting. Okay, so here I have a node and I have, I will talk about that in a second. Inside the node, we have another children. We have several children, we have four children. Okay, we have two, four, it means like Jenny sending a message to Tov and then the heading of the message, reminder I call that here. And there is a body. Don't forget me this weekend. So that could be, this is nice. So see the structure. We have messages, several messages probably will be inside. We have a note, end up with a note. And by the way, we have a second note, note, and end up with a note. Inside each note, we have two notes here, meaning we have two messages. One is from Jenny to Tov. I can write whatever I want. This is just a structure I decide. But see, the structure is very similar. And that's the way we want to keep it. Okay? And now there's another thing. This is called attribute, by the way. I can add attributes to a tag. This is called a tag node. And inside, I am adding an attribute. Okay? And then when we want it called parsing, we can find out a specific node. Let's say this one has an ID 501. I want to look for a specific node. I can find it. And we'll talk about it, how it applied to XBRL. So this is a nice, this is correct XML with attributes. I don't have to put attributes. How many tags I will have, doesn't matter. I can put as many as I want. I can put as many as I want nodes, blah, blah, blah. But in order for it to be something that a computer can understand you add a schema to it, okay? And then the schema 
will uh, allow you to allow the computer to understand how the structure should be. If it doesn't fulfill the schema, it will give you an error that that XML, although it's a good XML, but it doesn't fulfill the schema you want it to follow. Okay, we'll come to the schema in a second. One more thing that I wanted to mention, XML, and that's what makes the XML turn to be even multidimensional. You can add something called namespace, okay? So what does it mean namespace? See, here we don't have, we didn't see it so we have really only list of things. Here we added what is called a namespace. And namespace, by the way, you define in the very top, like here I have a table, okay? You see, I have a root, I have a table, another table, but they are not linked together. Those messages, they are on the same space. They are on the same level. Those telling me they are coming from totally different place. Somebody sent me a table. The table, by the way, could have several rows, okay? That's totally different table. That could be from another company. And I combine them together. But to separate them, so I know this come from one place and this one come from another place, I define what is known as a namespace. So here, in the very top, I put a table, and in a minute I will refer to that one, and I give a namespace, XML namespace, NS is namespace. And I define the edge to be the namespace. And how do you define? You can use any things you want. It's common to use a link, okay? You, you can use a link, whatever link, as long as a unique link. So I know to separate. So this one, okay, has to be different than this one. Then I know this is totally different namespace. So here is one namespace, this is second namespace, okay? So I know this is totally two different tables. I shouldn't mix them up. Or if I want to mix them up, I should be, I know what I'm doing. The second thing is after I specify the namespace, I change the tag not to include only a tag like a table, what we have in HTML and TR for a row, TD for the columns, okay? I also add the H. So I know this table could be a totally different from table from a different company, whatever. And the second one could be from totally different. This one has another namespace F. So I can put an F here. And I will show you examples how we use it in XBRA. Both of them under the root, but this one different from this one because this one also define namespace. By the way, you can look at it like I have two tables. A table is two dimension table. Every table is two dimension columns and rows. But now when I'm adding another namespace, could, you can think about it as a third dimension. There's many ways you can make dimensions in XML, and I will talk about that later on, okay? And I would say what well, I think the XBR should have been designed and not the way it is designed today. Let's move on. Okay, XML schema. Remember what I said, XML schema is defining how the XML should be structured. So here is the example from the previous page. And this one telling me, okay, this is the schema that telling me how it's structured. One thing you must know, the schema itself is himself, it's XML. So the schema itself is structured as XML, okay? So this one, by the way, it's XML. It has the namespace XS, okay? And the, this one, it's defining this one. So here we go. I'm defining an element. By the way, there's a lot of rules, context type, sequence, a whole language. It's a huge topic, by the way. It's a very big topic. We're not gonna dive into all of that. We just need to learn enough to get our work done, okay? But, and most of the time you'll get a schema for you. And many times there's computer programs writing the schema for you. So you can take this one and ask the computer, can you please convert how the schema should look like, and then you just make a little changes. There's a whole topic. We're not gonna get into that, okay? But a little bit, several very small elements. Like for example, I wanna define an element. Means this is a definition for element by the name of node. It's really referring to this node, you see that? 
So I'm defining an element node. How an element node should be structured? It has a, a context type, which is a sequence. What do we have in the sequence? I have one element called two. You see, the node have an element called two. I have another in the sequence, it has also form. Yeah, here we go. This is fulfilling the schema. It has an element called form. It has also an element called heading. Here we go, I have heading. It has another element called body. Perfect, I'm done. This is really a short schema, very short. You will see in real life, you see a very huge, very detailed, okay? And this schema is defining simple, telling me that I can have inside here an element called note, and the note has this structure. If I added another one, it would complain. They have something that doesn't supposed to be there. Or if you're missing the body, it would complain. Okay, this schema is not fulfilled because it doesn't fulfill. This XML is not fulfilling this schema. Usually the schema will be defined inside the document. We'll see element examples in a second. So we learned so far what XML is. We learn about XML. We learn also XML with an attribute. We talked about schema and we said X a schema is XML by itself and it's only defining what the XML should look like. That's what we did so far. Okay, here we go. Now we want to talk about XSLT. Remember I mentioned that and I said I'll come back to that. That's one of my favorite topics, by the way. It's a beautiful topic, XSLT. By the way, it's a whole language. It's a whole language, XSLT. In my opinion, it's one of the hardest languages. Okay, it's beautiful. What it does, it's so powerful. For example, I have here on the left side XML. You see, it's an XML catalog. And I have rows, CD, 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 etc. I just took the top part and you can follow a lot of words, by the way. You have a lot of words, okay, the catalog. Maybe I have a CDs, okay, for music or whatever. I have a title, artist, country, company, price, year. You know, a normal person don't want to see it this way. You want to see it's like an HTML. This is really not readable for a human being. It's really very inconvenient. I would like a way that I can send Daniel. I said, Daniel, I'm going to send you an XML with catalog. Write a program that takes this catalog and convert it and convert it to HTML. There's so many ways to do it. A beautiful way you can use a language called XSLT, okay? By the way, the SEC is using XSLT to take XBRL to convert it to HTML, but I will show you they are cheating, okay? I will show you, okay, that there is a problem with their mechanism. I found several errors in their mechanism, but what the idea, XSLT, is a language that can take an XML and convert it to anything you want, one of which is HTML. In this example, I wrote here a little XML, by the way, XSLT, I wrote it, by the way, which takes, I don't know, I didn't write this one, I wrote other ones, but this one I think I copied from the WS school. So you can look at this website, which I told you already a long time ago, it's a beautiful website. In my opinion, this is really a blessing that those people have done. You can see they have a little section on XSLT. Don't try to be an expert. It's, I used to be an expert, by the way, many years ago. I haven't touched it a long time ago because there's a lot of new stuff came out, which you can use, okay? But just go over it a little bit. And the example I took is really right from here, okay? And I put the link here for you. All what it does really, you can tell, the XSLT start, you see it says a template. It always start with a template with a slash, which means this is the beginning. When I start, go over this document, go find the top, the top node is node. This is a top node catalog, go there. This is kind of tell you, go there. And when you get there, stop. And right after that, start writing HTML, body, write my CD. This is HTML, you see, this is a very simple HTML. Write 
table, and then write TR background color, and then write TH title artist, all HTML up to this point. This is all HTML, okay? So when he got to the top of this document, is writing all the HTML, and then he got his stops here. Okay, so all this part, it's already written, has nothing to do really with this one, really. It just holds the whole thing. Now it's getting the interesting part. It's this part. You see for each, like look like Jinja, or looks like JavaScript, like all those languages, like all the XSLT is also a language, a looping around for each catalog slash CD means catalog go to a node CD for each CD that you find in this document, do a loop. So for each segment here is going to do a row. That's really what it means. You're making a row for each, for each node CD in here is making a row. And what does it put in the HTML row? It put two TDs. So here we go, I'm making a row for each, for each one of them, is that right? I'm making a row for each one of them. Okay, and all what I'm taking is, I'm taking only the title and the artist. So I'm telling him, inside the first TD, XSL, comma, value of, take the value of the node called title. Go find the title, take the value. It takes the value from here and it put it right in here. Then it goes to the artist, same things, value of select artist, it put the artist. That's why I'm getting row by row, I'm getting the title and I'm getting the artist. If I wanted to put also the country, it would be very simple. I would just add another one here. I will write TD, XSL, that value of select equal, this time I will add country. And then I will have another column. It will add another column. That would be a good exercise for you, by the way. Why don't you go even here, by the way? You can go here and look at it. They have a beautiful example here. It's a really nice example. By the way, I took it right from here. Let's look at it. Okay, see, this one, in fact, they have a long list. Okay, see that? And they wrote this one, X, the XSL. Okay, it would be really nice. I don't know if they have a clip here. Here we go, edit me. Oh, here we go. Let's see if it, it will do it, the way I said it. So let's add another one. I don't know if they are, and I want to add here, not artists, I want to add country. And there's an engine, by the way, there's a component. They know how to activate, do the whole things behind the screen. If you want, you can read about it. We're not going to use the XSLT. We're using a beautiful soup, another library in Python, uh, which does similar things, okay? Uh, so you can avoid the need for that one. So I'm going to take this one, control copy. This one for the title, for the top part, it will add another column. And this is for the detail here, this part. So here, instead of artist, I would call country. Where is country? Here we go, you see country. So I'll write country. And now if I, I hope this is the way it works, I click here. Yeah, here we go, you see, I got another column. Isn't it beautiful? It's pretty cool. I used to use it a lot many years ago. I think this is beautiful stuff because as the more you learn about it, you see how powerful this idea is. Unfortunately, the SEC, whoever designed the website of the SEC was lacking this knowledge, okay? And they missed up big time. So we're gonna fix it and do it the right way, okay? So. Let's move back to our presentation. Okay, so what is XSL? T is really a language that allows me to take XML and convert it to anything. Specifically, I can use it to make HTML. And that's what most of the people do, okay? What the language structure, let's, let's leave whoever wants to really get into it, more than welcome. I think you should spend or invest your time more into a, language, uh, into a library in Python called Beautiful Soup, which I'm using extensively, uh, processing data in XBRA, and I will show it to you, okay? 
Okay, so here we go. We have an example of XBRL. See, it's complicated. It's scary even. Okay, what I'm going to do, show you ones that we actually use in, in our studies and our, what we do in our stuff. So I'm going to download really a real one for us, like for Apple. Look at it. And you will see that that's exactly what we do. So I'm going to go into this, uh, what is it? Not here. Here we go. Here I made a special component. It's a really complex one, beautiful one. And I'm going to show you, let me open. We do so much work here. You will see, you will like it. Let me open it here. Okay. In fact, you know what, control this, so it won't take a lot of time. I will open this one. I will open this one, so it won't take too long. And I will do it for a company that already have done it, so it will go fast. Okay, and open. And i like to show you, I mean, a real one, instead of just talking theoretically. Uh, let me open another one here. 127, bingo, oh, that's the wrong one, 150. And let's go to corporate. Let's go to this one, okay. And I will download for the, the Apple. I think the Apple, I did it. Let me see, Apple, bingo. And as a call, by the way, here we go, I collected so much data, but I did it so nicely. And that's really what the SEC is missing big time. Okay. And you see there's links here and I already know how to collect the link to the XBRL itself. So you see there's several links. I'll go over that, by the way, we'll go over a few of them. Click on this one. This is really the way the XBRL, the the Edgar, which is the system of the SEC, expect you to get to for Apple. And then they expect you to go and find this link uh, called instance. You see that? Okay. This is, by the way, the schema. XSD is the schema itself that comes with that one. You see, it says here, taxonomy extension schema. Okay. The choice of the matter, it's addition to the regular schema. But this is the instance. This is the XBRL itself. By the way, a link to that, see if I click on that one, you'll get it here. But I already know how to find it. So I already collect the data for this one right in here. That's why we work so organized. You see, you have a link here. I think this one, here we go. If I click on this one, why it doesn't like me? Should like me. No, it doesn't. So let me copy it from here. It should be nice to me. I don't know why it doesn't do it. Copy. Here we go. And I'm going to go here and go click on it. Control V. And it should take me to that page. This is exactly the same page, by the way. Let me open it on the other browser of mine. Where is the other browser? So you can see it here, right next to it. Control V. That's the one. In fact, what I got here, it's exactly the same one that you see here. I just took it from here. I know how to read this page and I know how to find it. So I know how to find it. So I copy that link automatically. That's the way we're getting this one. So we can use Python to scrape the XBRL. That's a very advanced topic. And you see people writing, writing or making videos just to teach you that small part. And they're spending like several videos just to do and explain. We don't want to waste our time on that. Let them do those videos. We'll focus on the near it. Unfortunately, they don't really know enough accounting and they don't know enough XBRL to really talk meaningfully. But if you look at the XBRL, you have a lot of text. You see those text? And you see here, this is a schema, AAPR. That's a schema, as we learned before. And what is the schema defined in the very top? If you go on the way up, 
your final one, here we go, namespace AP, A APL, the server schemas. By the way, the default schema, this is known as default schema. Why? Because it doesn't have any name, you see? It says XML and S, nothing. It doesn't specify anything. So it means if something, I use any tag and I don't put anything, it means the default schema. That's a huge topic, but I'm not going to dive into all the detail. But there's another schema, DEL. We'll talk about it in a second. We'll see that. Using it, I use it when I'm parsing the schema. I have something for countries. It has a schema. It's follow up. This one is a meaningless. Don't try even to go there. It doesn't mean anything. It's just unique. So you define country. It has many schemas. You see, GAP, US GAP. It's very important, by the way. What is it? Here we go. I use it. US gap. You see that? That's a schema. Here we go. Let's search. Control F. US gap. You see, there's so many tags in this schema. Not all the tags are in this schema. Not all of them. See this huge document. Well, I told you, I gave you an example before. It's a small one. But hold a second, it's not, see, here already you have other type of text. You see, there's other text, not only XBRA, okay? There's so many of them. Let me go all the way up. Where is it? I can't really see it. Here we go. Let's go all the way down. You see, there's other, other text, XBRLL. That's a different schema. You see, there's so many of them, and each one of them means different things. Okay, here we go. We have context. Hey, this one doesn't have any anything. That means that's the default schema. Okay, that's why they define the default. Okay, and there's so many of them over there. I use all of them, by the way. It's so important to know that stuff because otherwise you cannot collect and it's really complex too. Fixed, I got it to fix what the SEC should have done, unfortunately. There's a lot of errors. Not errors, but conceptually, they didn't do it right. And we will do it right, fix it, and reproduce a lot of those stuff in the right way. And maybe we don't really even need to because we will use a database, a multidimensional database, much better in the way they're providing it to the investors. Okay? So far, so good, guys. Brenda? You doing good? Yes, Dr. Uh. How about I make a test to you guys? What do you say? Can I test you guys? Oh, you say, please don't. What do you say, then? Can I ask questions? What do you say? Brenda, what do you say? Jeremiah, what do you say? Or oh, you got scared, or you were asleep and you woke up, you heard the test. <laughs> You can tell I taught many years. I know how to wake up students. <laughs> so what is a schema? Who knows what a schema is? It's uh, a schema, I don't know the name like okay. is. A stuff. schema is XML. You no? Know? Yes, it is. It's written in XML. But what yes, does it, it do? What is it meant to do? Daniel, yes, what a schema comes to do? A schema, it's its function. It, it just describes the structure of an XML document. It's defining the XML, how is it should be structured. But it's yeah. written also in XML. So you have an XML. XBRL, it's an XML. You see, this is XML, what you see on my screen, what I showed you before. It's an XML. But the XML has a schema to define it. OK? What is a namespace? We use namespace in XML. Here we go, I showed you examples. Showed you examples. Is that right? Yes, no. Examples here. You see, US GAP is a namespace, isn't it? Yes. That means it's a different part of different type of information, by the way. You can look at it. By the way, I look at it as a multidimensional. One day will make more sense to you. Why do I define namespace in the beginning of the document? See, it says XBRL. This is the, the main node of the XML. 
And here I define all the lamp spaces I'm going to use. You see, up to here. This is really the, all of them are attributes, defining name spaces. Could be many kinds. This is a very complex document. So I have many name spaces. And when I, by the way, I could have used another name space. I can put two financial statements, one for IFRS, which is coming in Europe, in Africa as well. In Africa, you use IFRS. And the company can follow, that's different following different rules of accounting. And you can use US gap. Mm. So if the company is operating in the US and operating in Africa, they might want to publish two financial statements, one for Africa and the IFRS and one for the US. And they will map two name spaces and put all the financial statement in the same document. One for the Africa, but you get both of them. So if you are interested in the way you should present it in Africa, you go to the namespace of US, you will say Africa IFRS, something like that. You can call it that way. That works perfectly. Somebody take the same document, want to present in the US, or will look at the namespace for the US gap. So namespace desi designed to specify different areas. Where you can get really whole things in the same document. Here you have US gap. It really is mostly the data. We'll talk about it later on if we have time. But namespace, you should know. So this is namespaces. We have an X barrier. Okay, this is the way we use them. Oh, by the way, we have all those tags. You see, this is a tag in this namespace. Inside it, it has a lot of other attributes. Okay, but this is really simple. Simple tag. You can look at it as a simple tag. Very simple tag. Looks complex, scary even. But really, when you think about it, it has a beginning, has an end. You see, you can look at it. This is the end of the tag, the, the child tag. It's just under the name space US gap, but this is the name of the tag. You see, this is really the name of the tag. We use it. I use it. I pull them out. You will see. Here we go. This is the tag. It says stockholders equity. It has attribute, context reference, something. I have a decimal. By the way, when it says decimal, it means all the numbers you see here. You know, I will please present it, but this is really detailed. You don't really have to get into that. I myself do not get into that. It says go six. You can go six numbers, meaning when they collected the data, they collected it in millions, so he added six zeros here. But who cares? I have an ID. ID, like if I want to identify this specific one, who cares? Unit reference. Unit reference is very interesting. It tells you, you know, you have only a number here. What is it? It tells you it's a US dollar. Where do you find this one? You just go and look for the unit reference. It has a rules of linking those stuff. We'll talk about that later on. Okay, it has R calls. It's quite complex, by the way. If you already want to talk to study, you can have a professional just learning this topic. But I don't recommend. I really don't. We're going to do it one time in the right way and the hell with all this bullshit. I'll be honest with you. It's a beautiful idea, but the implementation didn't, was not done the right way. Also, don't forget it was done in the early 2000s. People didn't have the knowledge and business intelligence that they do now. So that might be one of the reasons, but I would expect from the SEC to be dynamic. So if things change to improve, they got stuck with themselves, okay? It will be really complex for them to change it, but we'll talk about it some other sessions. Okay, so we everybody knows what the schema is. What is XML? Anybody wants to say what XML is? What is XML, guys? <laughs> Jeremiah, why are you holding your chin? Come on, what is a XML? Don't be afraid. I didn't know what XML before. Now I do. You will. So what is XML? Daniel, what is XML? Can't hear you. XML is like a language written in form of... Okay, tell me if it's true or not. XML is a document. It's true. 
True. XML has to have a tag on the tab and closing tag. It's true. I close the tag. I have a tag on the top and the bottom. It's exactly the same. Just start with a slash. Correct? Yes, doctor. It's correct. Okay. Every tag in the XML could have children tags. Correct. That's true. And each one of them has to open and close. Yes. Yes. Good. So you know what XML is. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, not so much. You know, that's enough for now. Okay? That's enough for now. And you will see my videos and we'll have a lecture. We're just preparing for the lecture. Is that right? Yes. Okay? And then eventually you'll be expert. And then we'll do some stuff and you record yourself. And then you become to be, you accumulate the knowledge. Remember what I said, every employee of Academy CD in the end of the day will have to work only three days a week and two days studying. You always have to study because it's endless. Now you believe me. We haven't touched even 10% of what I have to teach you. I'll be honest with you. So you got scared, don't you? you probably never met a professor like that, Brenda, did you? And don't forget I'm an economist. Never, I never taught you economics yet. I'm also an accountant. I'm a CPA, so you learn a little bit of accounting from me. But I'm expert on international taxation. It's a whole topic. Tax law. It's a very interesting topic. Complex topic. It's beautiful. So I can't even see the kind of, it is international. It will be, we will have to deal with to reduce our taxes. So we'll have to design it in a smart way. And we will. We get there. Okay? So we know now XML. We know what XBRL. Okay? We know the structure. And now, what is the challenge? The real challenge is that companies for every year they have XBRL. See, this one, it is for 2012. You can tell here, by the way, you can find 2012, ending up in 2012. See that? Starting here and ending in 2012. By the way, in my document, the way I purse it, you see, this is what for 2012, you scroll down a little bit. Here we go. This is what I did for 2013. By the way, the last one, I think, is for 2020. For each year, I collect that links. It's so important to be able to, to find and see how big it is. My God, look at it. Okay, this is only for one company. So let's see for 2020. Let's take the last one here. So I collect all of them. No, this is the view. I'll get to that in a second. But boy, this one, I think. Isn't it? I think this is it. This is for 2020, if I'm not wrong. We'll see in a second. Here we go. This one was for 12. Every year you get a document, separate document. What the problem is, and that's really generally the problem, that every company changing the text. See, this is another one for 2020. If they use the same tag, say this says 2021, but it's only January, so it's probably 2020. Okay? But the problem is they are changing the, 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 the changing the text they are using, which is annoying. So I cannot really pull the data as I should have been able to. So what did I do? I wrote a little program. And we go and collecting what really the text supposed to be every year and we put them under a new text, our own text. And we'll talk about it and we'll get there. Okay. And then when I pull the data for every year, I know which text they're using for everything. How do you know that I'm not lying to you? Very simple. Just go into Academy CD. That's what Brenda is getting expert on. We go to the admin. And we made the special tables. We had several tables in corporate valuations. By the way, this is just really kind of touching and we get more and more. See, this is our account. Okay. Yeah. We can't see your screen. 
I did. Ah, sorry about it. Sometimes it doesn't do the job. Tell me if you do see it now. Is it working now? Yeah. Okay. By the way, I went to the co in the admin, to a corporate valuation, I went to account. This is our definition of account. Okay, we made our own chart of account. This is called chart of account. One that you need to know that. Each account, for example, revenue, you see revenue? We gave it a number, okay? We say revenue, it's part of the income statement. See that? And it's in millions. So when we collect data, remember that was the minus six, that was the scaling. So every data we collect is in millions. So revenues and revenues, we made our own list. And now what we did as we went along, we went and start collecting which takes every company is using in different years. That's quite a challenge to do that. And that's what we did in the account match. If you go here, I think it's much more sophisticated than that. If you go here, let's say for Apple, let's look for Apple. Okay, this is for Apple. So now, if you look at here, by the way, this is really just part of it. Revenue, you see revenue? See revenue? In 2018, Apple had used a different take than 220. Because 220, I reported in the, I reported in the industry, but one day I will get into deeper into that. But everything I see here, interest expense, Apple have changed their take. In 2017, they used different than they used in for, let me maybe click here, maybe even different years, you see? Here we go, look at the inventories. All the inventories, you can tell. Hey, by the way, this is the same. Inventories, inventory name. Apple made a mistake, this one doesn't need to be there, but that's okay. Let me find something else. Uh, duplicate, here we go. Here we go, this is a good example. Long-term debt, okay? Apple have used in 2012, they used that tag in XBRA. Okay, let me show that to you, so you really believe me. We have that financial statement for 2012, we opened that, isn't we? Up, oh, it's gone again. Do you see my screen now? Do you see yes, my screen, by the way? Yes, yes doctor. doctor. Okay. So let's go into 2012. I think this is the 2012, isn't it? Yeah. Let's look for this take. Control F, Control V. Here we go. We have takes. By the way, you have it several times. That's when the reference context reference comes to. But let's leave it for now. Okay. You see, we have a tag, and here is the amount. But see, in 2000. 20, it wasn't there. Let me go to the 2012. You see, I won't find. It. Hey, there is. Not really, but it's not as a tag, some link. I don't have it really as a tag. You got it? It's not really a tag. In yeah. 2012 and 20, they changed it to something else. Let's open even another one. Okay, let's look at which one did I see in the table? 2000 and in 2014, let's open 2014. I collected all of them. We're collecting it easily. 2014, let's God help me to find it. Okay, this was 12. This should be 13 and it should be 14. I think it should be the date here somewhere, but I believe this is the 14. just your, so you can really see how it is really designed. Uh, not here. here we go. Let's go to 2014, control V. Go here. Bingo. Okay, now which tag did they use for long-term debt? 
Okay, in 2014, they didn't use that one. So let's see if we can find this one. You will not, you shouldn't. Control F, Control V. Control V. Here we go, but this is, uh, there is a tag in fact, 2004. Which year is that? 2014, interesting. Other liability, no, how come? No, that cannot be, hold a second. Long-term debt, that's 2012. And let me see what is long-term debt because that's what I want. See, they changed this one maybe for something else for 2014, let's see. Let's go back to here, Control F, Control V. Here we go, that's the long-term debt. If I took the other, it would be the wrong da data. The switch, got it? Now, how do you collect the data? That's not an easy. We'll talk about it several times. Brenda, you should be expert. You and Daniel and Jer Jeremiah, you don't have to, but you should know. But you, Brenda, must be expert. You and another two or three people that you will have in your team eventually. That's a professional by itself. But see, 2014, this is the right number. If I took the other one, it would be wrong because that will be other. See, they switched. And how would you know? That would be a nightmare. You never can really say this is the wrong number. This is not the right number. You'll get the wrong number. Got it? That's why many times we find errors in other, other companies, by the way. I will demonstrate in a second. You will see the error they made. Some other companies. It's not a simple task to do. Very hard, in fact. That's why they get errors all the time. Okay. Anyway, this is really just introductory to this topic. It's a huge topic. We thank God. We got to a beautiful stage that we have this mechanism that we use. For example, here. We got 2020. This one is the collector of the data. We get into here. We're going to here. This is the way the SEC getting it from the XBRN. This is our chart of accounts. Got it? So we do the matching. And I will talk about it later on. I don't want to record it for the public. I don't want the public to know how we do it. How do we collect the data? I don't want anybody to know. It's our own patent. Okay? I don't want anybody to know how we do it, but that's the way we do when we click here and we choose revenue, it knows how to find the tag, the special tag for that one, for that specific year and put it in the database. He knows how to do it. That's pretty cool. And when he knows what it is and I go into here, it pull the data from there and it matches for all the years. That's why I can compare now in mine Okay, when you look at the long-term debt, you have a long-term debt here somewhere. Long-term debt, you see that? This is the right numbers, but he knows which tech to use every year for up one. That's pretty cool. And it's different tag in the XBRA. That's the problem that the SEC have done. How do you approach it? How do you fix it? That's not a trivial exercise, and we did it. Okay, we already have it working beautifully. So now, Brenda, you have more understanding what you're doing when you're collecting data. But you really actually, when I go, let's do, and we finish for that, we'll do it separate classes and then we start recording. When you go to a company, let's go into, let's say I go here. I'm looking for companies going to be traded this week. Target is one of them, is that right? I click on target. I go into, let's refresh it. I like to refresh because I'm not that clean on my code yet. I refresh it. Okay. I go into 500. I get all of those control alt, click on here. I get what being traded next week. Nvidia, I did it already, by the way. This is completed. Let's look at target. Target, what is target? Please do that, the brand up. I click on target. It's supposed to pull the data. How do you know that it pulled? But I will make it go there and give you a message here. Data is downloaded. I will do it later on. For now, Brenda, if you go to here and you click ratios, you will see data. Then you know it downloaded the data. I used to make it open right here. But you see there's data missing. You see that? 
And the right place to go is go to here and see if there's anything missing. I don't see account receivable and they probably don't have, okay? I don't have marketable security either. You can double check, you know, you see 2020, you can go here to the SEC. And I strongly recommend, Brandon, you know, that's the way we work, to open another one next to it and work with two screens when we collect data. I just wanted to show everyone else that didn't do it yet. But I think most of you did. I like to work with both of them, two of them. I look at this one and here I do the work. It doesn't matter. I go back again and this is target. So I don't need to really go and make it slighter. I can take this one from here, go to here, put it here. I will download the data, the same length. Go to FSA, yeah, here we go. I have data, beautiful. Go to SEC, click on 2020. We collect data, we're starting always from 2020. Go to here, and what am I missing? It looks like I'm missing in, I'm missing what? It looks like I'm missing account receivables and short-term investment. That's really investing in some companies less than 50%. That's what it means really. Oh no, sorry. This is like investing in some stocks. Okay, we have affiliated here somewhere, but anyway. So let's go and see if I'm really missing any things. Let's go to the balance sheet. It has different names, position, financial positions and all of that. Inventory, current asset. We don't really have those two accounts, so I'm okay. Is that right? Equity investments in affiliate. We have this one in 2020. Affiliate. Why is it? I don't see it. Why is it? Anybody see it? Billing, computer, constructions, blah, blah, blah. No, I don't see it. Anybody see it? No. I don't see it either. <laughs> How come? How do I see it here? That's strange. No, this is, sorry. Property, plant, and equipment. My mistake. Yeah. It's at 26, 878. If you go here, this is the right number. You see that? Yeah. The beautiful is when I'm connecting this one, it goes and get the tag of the XBI. Okay? But see, we're not seeing the data for which year? 219, is that right? Yes, yeah. doctor. So that means they're most likely using different tag. Is that right? So I go here again. I go back to 2019. Go here again. Financial positions. Property, plant, and equipment. Yeah, they're probably using a different tag. I'm gonna go click and go and choose property, plant, and equipment. Anybody see property, plant, and equipment? Here it is. Now see the beauty. Let's go back to the, what do we put it? No, not this one. I don't want this one. This one, not this one. Which one? No, not this one. Not this one. Where is it? Here we go. Let's open another one. Let's go to this one. But right, let's go to Academy City. Doctor, it's the second one after what? the WhatsApp. Which one? The one after the WhatsApp, the second one. Which one? This one? No, the, uh, the second one from your left. No, this two, but I wanted the database. So I want to do another one. Okay. Academy City. Yeah. Okay. I put it here. So let's go into the admin. Corporate. Oh, all right. There we go, right there. And the one that I want, this one, that's the beautiful one. The match. So you can really understand what it does. We just did it. We want to go for which company is the tag, isn't it? So if tag, let's see if we can find it. No, it goes there. I don't want it to go there. 
or I will lock target. I think this is the name of the company. And then target, let's ta spell that one. That's right, target. Control F, target. Here we go. Is it? Okay. Here we go. Let's click on it. Come on. Here we go. Look at that. Let's refresh. And you can tell in 2019, you can tell 2019, they're using a different tag for property plant and equipment. Let me click here. And you can see that they are different. And that's what I just collected. You see that? Everybody see that? Just don't yes, sir. Oh, property plan and equipment, that's what they use for 2020. Oh my God, couldn't be longer. But I don't really care, it does the work for me. 2019, they use totally different tag. So how can I pull the data from the XBRL? Got it? That's why we did all what we did. We're not gonna record it. We're not, but I do want you, Daniel, to be expert on it, you and Brenda, and then all your team, okay? That's beautiful. And what does it, it really is this machine we developed here. So for 2019 now, see, we don't have any data. We don't have data because it didn't know, it thought he using the same tag as previous year. Since this has changed, it couldn't pull it up. So now if I go here, Let's refresh. See the beauty of it. If, we are, if I refresh, I must go into here. Click on here, by the way, and go into the input and pull the tag, the target. Now is going to the X, because I made the admin, I marked that it goes back to the X barrel and putting, pulling the data. Takes him a little time. So he did, he finished. Now, if I go here, look at that. Let's see, property, plant, and equipment. What is property, plant, and equipment? Hey, beautiful, isn't it? You see that? Yes, doctor. yes, doctor. But how does it do it? It went for 2020, it pulled that XBRL and it pulled the data from here. For 2019, it used the new tech. And since I didn't put anything for 2018 and before, it always goes to the last one. I wrote a function that does it automatically. So it goes over all the X barrel. Just imagine how much work it does. It goes all the X barrel of that company. And it pulled that specific one for that year. That's beautiful. See, 26, 283. Let's go and look at it. That's exactly that number, isn't it? Look at it. Yeah, exactly that number, 26, 283. And 25, 533. Let's see if that's correct. 2019. Let's see if that's correct. 2000. Eh, we have an arrow. Why not? Do you see the arrow? I made an arrow. Can you see that arrow? See, 2020, I have an arrow, in fact. This number should be in here. 26. 83, see that? Yes. That should be for 2020. But I need to find out why I have an error. I have an error. This is the number for 2020, correct? See that? 2020 should be 2283, but that's not what I got. I got it for 2019. I know what it has to do with. It really has to do with the fact that they have also 2021 in their uh, financial statement. They have also 2021, which is for, it's the beginning of the month. So I have to fix it. Got it? Yes. So this is an error. And how do we record an error? We go to here. And then I write to myself, here we go. I need to really start taking care of all those errors. I add click. And I write here number six, that's for errors. Six is for errors for AAPL, is that right? Oh, no, for target, T, A, G, data, 
Reported. Wrongly. Doctor, it's. Uh, the tag is TGT. What? It's TGT, not TAG. What happened? The ticker for target is TGT. What is the ah, the company name is different? Yeah. Yes. TGT, you're right. Thank you. T G T. Okay, data reported wrongly. You see, I cannot spell anything, so I wrongly. Okay, data report wrongly. C data for doctor. Yes. Your screen is stuck. Ah, uh, yeah, he does it all the time. I don't know why. That Zoom, you see, even Zoom is terrible. Worse than ours. <laughs> we need to have our own Zoom. We have, by the way, I took it down. See, data for 2020 reported for 2019. We need to fix it. There is no saving, you see? You move out of here, it's saving automatically. That's beautiful. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right, there's another. There's so many that I have to fix. When I fix it, you can see it if you want. It's a hard one. It's usually killing me. It takes me sometimes two or three hours to figure it out. But it's worth it because then you fix and fix and fix, and then it becomes to be perfect. It's already very good, but this is very unique. I know why. I can guess why. You know, I can guess why. It has to do with the fact. I already saw it here, by the way. If you look at here, this is a 2021 probably. You will see here, 212, no, 212, and you go in the very bottom. This one should be 2020, but it's, here we go, let's see if I can. Here we go, see 2021? That's the source of the error, but I will need to fix it. I will fix it, another big deal, okay? Yes. It has to do with that, probably. By the way, this one, what you see here, I'm collecting the data much better than they do. Much smarter. This is really the data replacing all the eggs behind. And I'm going to do it even better. Because from here, I'm going to put it in a database. And then we can throw it away. That's just on the way to clean up all those errors. And then we start collecting the data the right way. It's beautiful. It really is a piece of art. Okay. I think that's enough for today. What do you say, guys? Yes, I don't know why I said already an hour ago. <laughs> what do you say, Jeremiah? It's enough, I think, for today, isn't it? Yes, doctor. All right, good. So you're going to work hard on that video. You're going to work hard with Michael on two or three vi short videos explaining what do we teach the certificate one. You can work with Brenda, Daniel, and Michael, but you are in charge of the marketing. That's part of the marketing. Make a nice short video, two minutes even. You decide, you can put some text, you can speak, you can have Brenda talks, you can Daniel talks. What do we study in certificate one? And then we put it somewhere. We can put it in there, you know, when somebody click, you can start marketing it in our YouTube channel. You can put it in the, in the, in the, how do you call it? Facebook, Instagram, whatever. You want to start getting people to know about us. That's the way to do it. Got it? No, no class is opening. Make a date, beginning of December. We start it. Make a date. Okay? And I want to yes. see close to 15 students coming from all over the country or all over East Africa. It would be really nice to get someone out of different country. It's about time. Yes, doctor. I will ask uh, Emmanuel to get a couple, few students from South Africa, maybe if we're lucky, and we'll see how that works. Okay, we'll see. Yes, it's about time. Now we'll tell Michael to push Mia. Tell her we're opening a class Whoever wants to join, we'll give him a scholarship or something. So we'll get some from the US. I will get the class a little jump. And believe me, after you do two or three of those, you're done. You can retire. 
I'm retired, you see. I was retired since I was 20 years old, I think. I was pretty young. I stopped walking just for fun. I have nothing to do, you see. You can tell it. No, I'm just kidding. But I love walking. I love what I do, as you can tell. And most important things, I want to see you guys succeed. If you like me, I want to see you successful. That's Then you make me happy. Okay, guys, it's enough for today. Bye, sweetie. Uh, do the QA with the students at five o'clock, yeah? Okay, get them ready for tomorrow. Bye, sweetie.